Hello everyone. Welcome again to another session on gems of geometry. In the previous uh, few uh, series of lectures, you saw different types of uh, properties of different geometrical entities like triangles and circles. So if you remember, we started with uh, the sine law in triangles, followed by Stewart theorem, Sivas theorem, and multiple other theorems related to triangles we studied. Also, we saw things like uh, Simpson's line, and uh, you know, we, which talked about collinearity of points and other things, right? We also discussed uh, various properties of altitudes, medians, and angle bisectors, perpendicular side bisectors of triangles. Carrying on with that, uh, you know, we are going to start a new section now where we are, uh, we are going to discuss more on collinearity and concurrence of lines and vis a vis, um, let's say, uh, quadrangles and other uh, geometrical. Uh, polygons right so that's what uh, the agenda of this video as well as the subsequent videos are is that we are going to discuss as i told you collinearity concurrence and we are also going to discuss properties of quadrangles now and uh, also uh, uh, various properties related to the diagonals and multiple other things we'll start with a small introduction on some you know uh, some definitions and some nomenclature has to be understood before we actually jump on to studying all those theorems because all those theorems will require some kind of a proof and those proofs will require some kind of prerequisite understanding of some definitions and uh, some notations so that's what uh, the objective of this session is so today we are just going to discuss and this session particularly only about uh, the various types of quadrangles how do we define them uh, what are uh, different types and you know uh, how do we classify them and then what is meant by area of a polygon so as if uh, if you remember uh, your uh, any polygon n sided polygon in a in geometry uh, we have what n vertices and with n vertices there are n sides as well right so any n, pol n sided polygon which is called n gon so we have learned that n gon is nothing but uh, a polygon with uh, n sides and whenever there are n sides there are n vertices and uh, so hence n, n gon is a polygon closed figure with n vertices and n sides and we have studied about triangles we have studied about quadrilaterals we have been calling these as quadrilaterals but in case of triangles we call them triangle we don't call them trilateral in common day to day these things why are quadrilaterals called quadrilaterals so we actually should use the word quadrangles in quadrilaterals for quadrilaterals as well because later on when you take up a course on projective geometry you will come to know that there we don't talk about uh, laterals we don't we just talk about lines and hence wherever the lines are intersecting they form an angle and hence wherever we get four angles in a closed figure we call it quadrangle isn't it so um, that's what uh is the you know understanding is so we'll be calling them quadrangle and not quadrilateral for this session at times because my because of my own let's say um you know uh the way we have been taught during our school days and all that so we have been calling it quadrilateral that's there's no wrong or nothing is wrong about it but yes uh calling it quadrangle would be more appropriate so that's what we are going to do and we'll start with understanding of basic quadrangles and their varieties so let me, uh, in, you know, introduce you to different types of uh, quadrangles which you have already seen. So let me just uh, turn these uh, axes off. We don't require them. So let me switch it off. Okay. Now let's talk about a uh, polygon, and especially we are going to talk about quadrangles, right? So here is a quadrangle. So if you see, uh, I have drawn a. Um, sorry. Let me just redo it. Okay. So here is, I'm going to do a draw a polygon. This is the polygon. And yes. So ABCD is a uh, polygon, and uh, you have you know this that uh, all the angles here, if you see, are less than what? Less than 90 degrees, uh, less than 180 degrees, all of them. If you see, none of them are reflex. At max, they can be obtuse, but none of them are reflex. And this is called a convex polygon, right? So what is this called? This is called a convex polygon you already know this convex in this case quadrangle quadrangle fair enough right this is what we have learned and uh, one more thing if you notice if i just turn these off and let me just you know um, join the diagonal so if i join the diagonal with segment ac so ac is a diagonal 
BD is also a diagonal. And what do we observe? Both the diagonals are within the polygon, isn't it? So hence, if you see, or the quadrilateral, both, both diagonals. I'm writing both diagonals are within are within the quadrilateral, isn't it? So let me write only quadrilateral or quadrangle, right? Now this is a one variety. Another variety could be if I just again switch it off and show you another polygon. So let me draw another polygon. So here is the polygon and uh, let me draw it here. So point this and uh, let's say this one EF and let's say G and H and again back to E. So what difference do you see guys? So if you see, let me just pick it up. Yeah. Wait, yeah. So if you notice what is what is the difference between these two? So one angle here clearly is oh sorry, these angles have been mis you know displaced from their positions. Never mind. So this is the uh, another variety of quadrangle, and here this angle H angle H it is reflex angle, right? It's greater than 180 degrees within the polygon or within the quadrangle. The angle is greater than 180 degrees. This type of quadrangle is called re-entrant, re-entrant quadrangle, okay, quadrangle and what is the observation here? If I turn this off and join the, let's say, join your uh, diagonal. So if you see, out of the two diagonals, one is within the quadrilateral, not quadrangle, right? So one, one diagonal, one diagonal is out, is outside, is outside or not contained in the uh, in the quadrangle, outside the outside the quadrangle, right? This is another observation. Now let me draw one more type, okay? And uh, how about this? That I am taking one point here, I let's say, and this is J, and let's say K and L and back. Can you see this is another type of kind of twisted? You know, you have just taken a quadrangle and given it a twist around one of the diagonals like that, and it is appearing to be like that, isn't it? So this is called, if you see, this one is called crossed quadrangle. Crossed, as the name suggests, name is pretty much appropriate, crossed quadrangle. Okay, Co crossed quadrangle. And again, the speciality about this is, let me draw the diagonals here. So if I draw the diagonals J to L and I to K, if you see, nothing, you know, uh, very surprising. Both are, both diagonals are outside. Both diagonal are, are outside, outside the quadrangle. Correct? So this is the third type of quadrangle we are going to study. Yep. And lots of properties related to this crossed polygons are going to be there later on. We are going to see all of that. Now, another point I would like to make here is related to the concept of area of a polygon. Okay, so guys, for that matter, I have not discussed what is a vertex, what is a side and all that. You already know all of this and uh, you have learned previously what's side vertex and all that, adjacent sides, opposite sides. So I have not covered those things here. You know it already, I'm assuming. Now we are going to talk about something about uh, area, right? So here there are two things which we need to understand one is there is concept of positive and negative in case of areas as well as far as geometry is concerned just like vectors directed line segments we have positive line segment and negative line segment in Milanos theorem we'll see that we do talk about negative line segments right so in so we we generally try to maintain the sense of it right so in the the order in which the points are encountered while you start traveling in particular line 
so hence we call it directed line segment so if you go in one direction and come back these two segments are negative or opposite in sign okay so similarly in areas also we say that if we are tracing the points in anti clockwise so as i told you there are two points one now we have positive and negative areas as well okay and second is uh, the way it is done or how how do we decide which is positive and what is negative so clockwise direction of points if you trace in a polygon let's say area is what area is a space planar space covered by a polygon now if you take the vertices of the polygon and start tracing them in anti clockwise direction so in this case if i take an this quadrilateral angle abcd so abcd so if you see we are tracing this these points in anti clockwise direction isn't it so from a to b to c to d anti clockwise direction then we say we are we are talking about positive area of the quadrangle abcd and we write like this so within brackets you write um just a minute within brackets you have to write the vertices so a b c d this is how i would mean or in literature mathematical literature this will mean positive uh, area of this uh, quadrangle right so if you change the order in in let's say if you go clockwise direction a d c d so the area will simply be minus a d c b a d c b right i hope you understood this similarly if you take this triangle a b c right so if you simply write a b c it is positive area correct but the area of the triangle is written as minus c b a if you go in the opposite that is clockwise direction right so a b c is equal to negative of this c b a i hope this is understood right similarly here if this is point o right so hence in this triangle l o k so l o k is actually anti clockwise direction so area will be simply l o k but if you go the other way around l k o so it will be negative l k o i hope you understood these you know notations and uh, definitions about and types of different quadrilaterals and uh, how do we mention area okay positive negative clockwise direction negative anti clockwise direction positive do you remember this because we are going to use these concepts multiple number of times in the subsequent sessions so in that case let's say if you you know whenever we are discussing any theorem and uh, you are confused you can always come to this video and understand what are the meanings of different notations now what we are going to do is we are now going to take up the very first theorem related to quadrangles and that's called varignan's parallelogram you would have studied this in your previous grades or sometime you know some geometry course but we will be taking up the varignan's um, he was a french mathematician basically contemporary of leibniz and isaac newton and um, we will be studying about the theorem which he gave about the areas of uh, quadrilaterals and quadrangles and associate quadrangles and um, after that we will be going to discuss something called Brahma, brahmagupta's theorem which uh, many of you would have already studied about it so we are going to see all these theorems one by one followed by multiple other varieties of different geometrical features okay so uh, if you like this video please do share and subscribe to our channel and uh, that would uh, we would like to reach out to many many more people so that they can also um enjoy or let's say you know get this knowledge of geometry which is there for all of us okay so see you in the next video and uh, we will be going to discuss um varignan's theorem in the next video okay see you bye bye and thanks for watching this